Welcome to another Tech Insight, where we show you how to make your workspace work. In this episode, we're going to focus on push authentication for your environment. The first part from the user experience side is for the user to register a new device for the push authentication. And this is done with a unique URL focused specifically on registering new devices. When the site loads, the user is required to authenticate with their Active Directory credentials. This proves that the user is who they say they are. Once authentication is successful, the user can go ahead and register new devices for the push authentication. The user uses their mobile device and scans the QR code with the Citrix SSO application available from the Android and Apple app stores. Once the code has been scanned, the user now has a token that's linked to the environment where they'll be able to use push authentication. So in this example, the user is logging into the environment, and once they authenticate with their Active Directory username and password, Gateway is going to do a push authentication request directly to the user's mobile device where they just have to hit allow, and they immediately get access to the environment. To better understand how this works, let's take a conceptual architecture view of the environment where the user is on their endpoint, uses Workspace app to connect to Gateway where they authenticate against Active Directory. Upon authentication, Gateway contacts the Gateway service running in Citrus Cloud, which sends a request to the notification service to the user's registered device. From there, the push authentication request goes back to Gateway and successfully authenticates the user, completing this cycle. Push authentication is out of band, which means the network used for the user's username and password is different from the network used for the push authentication request. Out of band provides additional security in that both networks would have to be compromised in order to infiltrate the environment. For this deployment, we will use an n-factor flow, which lets us tie together our authentication policies and profiles into a graphical flow chart. We first must decide if the user is trying to authenticate or manage their token. If the URL contains manage OTP, then we will route through one branch of our flow where the user will authenticate with Active Directory username and password utilizing the single authentication schema. Once successful, the user is asked to register their device. If the user accesses the URL without the manage OTP parameter, they will go to the second branch where the user will use a dual authentication schema tying together Active Directory authentication with the push authentication service. Let's start the configuration by creating a push service for the environment. We utilize our on-prem Citrix Gateway device and access the advanced policies and action settings for push. We'll go ahead and create a new push service, which will tie this on-prem gateway with a Citrix Cloud API token that we create. So within our Citrix Cloud environment, we access the Identity and Access Management section and go to the API Access where we're going to create a new client. In order to create the client, an admin only needs to use a free Citrix Cloud account. Once created, the admin uses the ID, secret, and customer ID to tie together the on-prem gateway configuration with the admin Citrix Cloud API configuration. Once configured, the admin should refresh the page to verify that this configuration is active. The second part of the configuration is to configure our on-prem token storage location, which will be a parameter assigned to each Active Directory user account. We want to duplicate our Active Directory authentication action. Our initial LDAP action is used to authenticate the user to Active Directory. The duplicate will not perform AD authentication. Instead, it is used for token storage and retrieval only. For the OTP secret parameter, we specify the Active Directory parameter we will use for token storage. To enable push authentication, we must bind our push service action we just created to this LDAP action. 
With the push and LDAP token action created, we can now create the end factor flow. Our first step is to create the first factor in this flow, which is going to determine whether the user wants to manage their token or authenticate. So we're going to create two policies. The first policy is going to identify if the user incorporated a manage OTP parameter within the URL request. Because we're just looking at the URL, there is no specific action type that we have to select, so we pick the no auth n option. We now need to build the expression that looks at the URL that the user entered to determine if it incorporates a manage OTP value within the request. With the expression built, we can go ahead and finish the creation of this policy and add it to our end factor flow. We now need to create a second policy for this initial factor to determine whether the user is going to manage or authenticate. And this one is going to incorporate anything else. So the first part of this branch is for only those instances that include a manage OTP. If it doesn't, then we want to go down this path. So the expression is simply true. With the logic behind our initial factor complete, we can start building out the overall end factor flow. Selecting the manage OTP policy, we want to go ahead and create a new factor that helps us build this flow. And this factor is going to register the user's OTP token. The second branch is going to have a factor that's going to authenticate the user with Active Directory and OTP. On the OTP register branch, we need to select a schema that's going to authenticate the user in order for us to register a new token. So we go ahead and give the schema a name and then we can select one of the pre-built schemas incorporated within our gateway. And in this case, we want to use the single auth manage OTP schema. We also need to create an authentication policy associated with this particular factor. In this case, this policy must authenticate us to Active Directory with the username and password. So the action type will be LDAP. Within the list of available actions, we already have one built specifically for LDAP authentication. So we'll be able to use this one to provide that single factor authentication, allowing us to register our OTP. We need to perform similar steps with the bottom branch that is focused on authentication and not management of our token. So we first select a schema that will be associated with this branch of our flow. In this instance, what we want to be doing is a dual factor authentication with a token push. So we select that schema from the list of available schemas and associate that with our, with our factor. We also need to associate a authentication policy. Now, because we already created one in the top branch to authenticate to Active Directory, we can reuse that same policy for the bottom part of our branch. On the branch that manages our tokens, we now need to create another factor that will allow us to register our device. We need to create an authentication policy that allows us to utilize Active Directory to store our token. And for this, we'll use the action type of LDAP and the action we created in the beginning of the admin portion where we created that LDAP action that was not used for authentication. So there's two in the list that we have. One is for Active Directory-based authentication, and the other one is to store our 
token within Active Directory. On the bottom portion of the branch, we need to build one more factor that's going to use our token to authenticate with our device. So in this case, we will also have to assign a authentication policy to this factor and we'll be able to use the same policy we just created for the top branch. But instead of adding a token to Active Directory, we're going to use that token as part of the push authentication to help authenticate the user to the environment. With the end factor flow complete, we need to bind that flow with our authentication virtual server. Once the user has registered a token, an admin can look within Active Directory at the parameters for the user, all the different attributes, and look up the attribute specified within the LDAP action, and they'll be able to see the token assigned to the user's device. By adding push-based authentication, organizations can improve the strength of their authentication security while simplifying the user experience.